the word of God is the seed of God. The more we receive the word of God, our souls are purified. The more we receive the word of God, we are born again. That's why Paul would say, you know, I'm striving until when I see Christ be formed in you. When Christ is forming you, brothers, sisters, you become Jesus Christ walking here on earth. Remember, I told you in Romans chapter 9, verse 28, the Bible says, God will make a short and mighty work here on earth. But that short and mighty work, it will not be you doing it. People will see, yes, this is Brother Bruce. But in him, Jesus already formed. And then he will use you. He will use me to perform that mighty work. Listen, brothers, listen, sisters. You know, the Bible says the body of Christ was the temple of the living God. In the second Corinthians chapter 6, when we read, we are the temple of the living God. Brother, sister, as we read, is seeking for true worshipers. He wants to use your body. He wants to use my body. But in order for him to use us, we must be purified, clean, becoming blameless. Until when the Lord from heaven can challenge Satan. Have you seen my son in Vandabe? Have you seen my daughter in Vandabe? My gracious brothers and sisters. Is that your wish? Listen, brethren. When God brings a message, oh, this must be Isaiah chapter 53. Yes. yes, yes, yes. You know, I was about to continue. If something is telling me to read Isaiah 53, listen. Isaiah 53. The Bible says, Who have believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? God cannot reveal himself unto you if you don't believe the report. First of all, you must obey the word of God. And as I was telling you about it, you know, those who are cheating God, you know, in the office of the Prime Minister. If his bodyguard comes and sees you, you will just see a waste. No, 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 no. No. Because the policy is we don't do it in the presence of our boss. And when you are dressed like that, you miss whatsoever we take this day. Now, my precious brothers, my precious sisters, there was a young girl. Her name was Mary. She received the message from God. We know the scriptures. When the angel appeared unto her, she didn't refuse. 
she accepted the message. And then she asked, how, how, does, how, how is it going to happen? The Bible says, the Holy Spirit shall overshadow thee. Is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If Mary, just by obeying, receiving the message from God, the Holy Spirit overshadowed her. We are in the same position today, as Mary. If you receive the word of God, as we are reading here, being born again by the word of God, for sure, the Holy Spirit will come and overshadow thee. And the Bible says, you know, when they were talking to Mary, and that son which will be formed in thee, the same also applies today. When we receive the word of God, Jesus must be formed in you. Listen, brethren. Oh, yes, there is another scripture. Act. Yes, I like it. Must be act. Chapter. Oh, my God. The Lord. Yes. Act chapter 5, verse 32. Listen, my precious mothers and sisters. This is not a joke. It's between life and death. Before I read this, until when you will reach the stage of desperation, listen, until when you reach the stage of desperation, it will be difficult for you to seek God. Listen. The children of Israel, they were running from the Egyptians. They found themselves in front of Red Sea. I'm telling you. The first time when I saw the Red Sea, I said, Lord, you must be praised. People must fear. Do you know the size of Red Sea? They were under desperation. They didn't know what to do. When you do everything, you find yourself at the corner. You don't know what to do. You may want to go and see the magicians. No. The Lord Jesus Christ is there for you. When you read Matthew chapter 28, the Lord promised, I will be with you until the end of the world. They cried unto the Lord. And then he came. Listen, the one that I'm preaching, when he comes in, if there was darkness, darkness will become light. The problem is not with him, the problem is with you. Where there is sickness, when he comes in, you will experience the greatest healer, as it is written in Isaiah 53. Listen, my precious brothers and sisters, because we are talking about the new birth. Listen, and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Listen, Acts chapter 5. Verse 32. Listen to what the Bible says. 
and we are his witnesses of these things and so is also the Holy God whom God had given to them that obey him Amen. can you check your life what you're doing day and night you obey him when you read Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 9 you come up to verse 13 God can only seal those that obey him listen my friends brothers and sisters I beg you. Each time when I'm sharing the word of God, I always say, Lord, give me the opportunity to give to not to share everything. So that even if the rapture must take place just after this service, no one should come and blame me. Yes, you don't have to be a preacher. You can say you will choose for something to be Yes. I always say why people want to play in the kingdom of God. You can go and do your, you know, you can play in business, in soccer, in politics, or whatever. <laughs> But why people want only to come when things that are supposed to be serious can be chosen? I think somewhere there, you know, a preacher giving to our Lord Jesus Christ's name that I don't want to repeat him. And people will love him. Brothers, listen, sisters, this is between life and death. When you read Luke chapter 16, you will see there were two people, the rich man and Lazarus. The Bible shows clearly that Lazarus, at the end of his journey on earth, the Bible says the angels came and took him to the bosom of Abraham. But that rich man was found in hell. Because he was rich, I don't know, maybe 200 cars were accompanying him to the graveyards. People could say, oh, this one was a great man. You know, they could pay bishops to go and uh, <coughs> give sons, you know, very good sermon. You know, that's what I, I, I can't understand. <coughs> a preacher, knowing that this man was a drunkard, at his sermon, they would show how good he was, that God is in, the, God in heaven, we will receive him, uh, and so forth, and so forth. Listen, why people are playing with God? First Corinthians chapter 6, when we read from verse 9, the Bible says, Thieves, you know, there is a long list, will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now a preacher comes and says, This man, Everything, everything is, you know, in heaven. Which heaven? I promise you, if they ask me to enter that heaven, I will say no. I will refuse to enter that heaven. Listen, my precious brothers and sisters. This is between life and death. And when that rich man 
from hell was crying. Abraham could tell him between you and us, the distance is so huge. We don't, we don't come there. You also can't come this side. And then he said, but if that is the case, because I'm tormenting here. That's the word the Bible is using. Yeah. Can you imagine? The Bible used the word torment down there. It's not a joke. And then he could say, can you allow my five brothers you know, at least to know what is taking place here because I don't want them to come here. And you know the answer? They do have preachers. Let, let them hear them. That's why we are standing here. To say, brother, sister, this is the way. This is the way. The narrow way. And that narrow way will lead you to Jesus Christ. If you leave the narrow way, you know, no excuse because you have been warned. Listen, brothers, listen, sister. I would like to read for you. I'm not going to scare you, but uh, to let you know, let us go to Hebrews chapter 6. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 6, I will read from verse 4. Brothers, sisters, don't play church members. You must be sure Jesus Christ has taken over from you. Hebrews chapter 6 from verse 4. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gifts and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. Brothers and sisters, I beg you, you have already tasted how good, how precious is our God. And for your own reasons, you decide to leave the narrow way. The Bible says, it's not me, I'm reading from the Bible. It is impossible. May God help us. Brothers and sisters, if by God's grace, I will be among those who will be raptured. It's not because I'm a preacher. Because I know many preachers will miss the rapture. <coughs> Brethren, many preachers will miss the rapture. Listen, my precious brothers, listen, my precious sisters. Can you think about what our Lord did on the cross of Calvary? I always remember the first time when we were in Jerusalem. They showed us 
comfort, comforter. Where our Lord was crucified, it's up there. He was naked. And I remember that day, a precious brother of us, but a friend is uh, in Germany, was reading the scriptures. We were crying. He died for you and me. He was not smiling. It was very painful, shameful death. I always say, since my children are born, they have never seen me with a shot. Never. But him naked. And some could even come and say, if you are, you know what? Oh my God. Save yourself. Listen, precious brothers, listen, precious sisters. As we are reading in Matthew chapter 1, he came to save us from our sins. If you don't want to take it seriously, it might be your last chance. Listen, especially our children. I know you have been accompanying parents. Yeah, because it is Sunday let us go. Yeah, because it's Wednesday let us go. You know, you are just accompanying your parents. You must take decision now. Now, if you say, no, I'm still a child, when I will be old enough, yes. Let me tell you something. Joseph and Mary, they went to Jerusalem. The feast there. Now they decided to go back home. After I think three days journey, they realized that Jesus was not with them. They decided to go back <coughs> fetch to look for Jesus. Did they found Jesus in a stadium? He was a child. Did they find Jesus in a stadium? No. Did they find Jesus in a chapel? No. He was still a child. Don't say, until when I will be old, then I will follow what my parents are doing. <laughs> Listen, my precious brothers and sisters, I beg you, when I look at what is happening, politicians, they are trying to see what they can do for the climate change. Nothing good will happen there, nothing. And the Bible says, when you read in Luke chapter 21, the, our Lord Jesus Christ says, when you see all these things, look up. Whilst everyone is busy with politicians trying to get solutions left and right, we must look up. Lord Jesus, how am I standing in their presence? <laughs> Can you check your daily life? Are you not among those who are putting our Lord Jesus Christ to an open shame? 
Brothers and sisters, I beg you. If others are playing, we must pray. We must stop playing. We must start praying. Prayers should be our lifestyle. I like it. I will repeat it. Prayers must be our daily lifestyle. You know, it is good eh, to do this when you come from church. As many, they are showing to everyone. I'm from church. I'm from church. And some, they even wear their uniforms. I will tell you something. Please don't laugh. Something that happened many, many years ago in Africa. Someone came from his church. And because in their church they wear uniforms, and then uh, he met someone who was uh, like uh, who was troubling him. Then he says, "You are lucky because I'm having this uniform. Let me go and remove this uniform. Wait for me." Listen, brothers, listen, sisters. The inside must be changed. The Bible says, when you read, I think, uh, Romans chapter 6, uh, we are dead in Him. We are dying with Him and we resurrect with Him. And then, through baptism, we have been given a new uniform. Our uniform is the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we always advise everyone. You must be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Because when you are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, you have the new uniform. Listen, my precious Let me first. Yes. Roman chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. The Bible says from verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? What forbid? How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer day in? Know ye not? That so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism in death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. My brother, my sister, before I continue, I hope all of us here will baptize in the name of Jesus Christ. May God be Jesus. Listen, my precious brothers, listen, my precious sisters. When you are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, you are dead in Him. He has redeemed you. Oh my. I'm not going to this question. You see? Oh my God. Okay. I would like to go. 
go in the middle of second Peter. Yes, 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 yes. Second Peter. My precious brothers and sisters. Second Peter chapter one. I will read from verse 1. The Bible says, <clears throat> Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God. And of our and of Jesus our Lord. Listen to this one. According as his divine power had given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and virtue. Now listen to this one. Please don't miss this one. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. Not only promises, but precious promises. That by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. Brothers, sisters, today the Lord Jesus Christ is calling you. He's calling each one of us. He wants each one of us to be partakers of the divine nature. A little one of a dog is a dog. A little one of a cat is a cat. A little one from a lion is lion. But we are of God. We must have divine nature remember genesis chapter 1 verse 26 the bible says let us make men in our own image when god created you and me in his mind he wanted to see children who should be exactly like him. Today, the Lord Jesus Christ is here calling you, my brother, calling you, my sister. He wants you to be partaker of his divine nature. Hallelujah! Don't miss it. I feel like crying. Listen, brothers. Can you really miss such an opportunity? You didn't come to see a preacher. If you came to see a preacher, then uh, that was not the right purpose for you to be here. You came here to receive Jesus Christ. You might have been walking with him for a while. Now I ask you, my son, stop there. My daughter, stop there. Look unto me. I want you to come to me because I would like you 
to partake of my divine nature. And the Bible continues, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. He's calling all of us, come out, come out, come out. Come out from confusion. Come unto me. I would like to give to each one of you my divine nature. Are you ready to do it, my brother? Are you ready to do it, my sister? Those who must be raptured, they must be like Jesus. They must be exactly as Paul would say in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. The life that I'm living now, it is not me, but Jesus Christ living his life in me. Brothers, sisters, you must have a day. You might not remember the exact date, but you must have a day when the Lord Jesus stopped your life and he commenced his life in you. And then you can say, but uh, I used to smoke. Suddenly, cigarette doesn't say anything to you. People can come and give to you, you know, say, no, that's what you used to smoke. You may touch it. But when you're about to put it in, you know, in your lips, you not know, through your, your mouth, you will you, you start coughing. You used to be a, a, a smoker. But I'm telling you, just by touching it, that smell will make you to cough, you cough, you cough, they say, no, 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 You throw it away. Not you, Jesus in you. Even if you are, you were a drunkard, it will vanish from you. And then, as the Bible says, you become a new creature. <laughs> to be born again is the Lord Jesus Christ stopping your life and starting his life through you. But he can't force you. You will still have to make a choice. Adam and Eve made their choice but it was the wrong one it was the wrong one the children of God they obeyed God and God is so pleased with them that he's ready to give them anything Listen, my precious brothers, listen, my precious sister. I want this picture to be closing. Listen. Oh my, oh my, oh my. Yes. When the brother was mentioning. <clears throat> yes, let us go to Isaiah. Oh my God, oh my God. <clears throat> Listen, brethren. If you don't see God in your life,
Then be troubled. How can you be with God forever in heaven? The right now, you have never met him. Listen then, Isaiah 43. When my precious brother Moose was mentioning about the fire and everything, I said, Yes, I like it. Listen, Isaiah 43. Brothers, sisters, put your name here. Say, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is inviting me this morning to come to partake, his divine nature is speaking to me. Listen, Isaiah 43. From verse 1. But now, thus saith the Lord that created me, O Jacob, and he that formed me, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. Hallelujah! On the cross of Calvary, he gave his blood. It was not in vain. He redeemed you. You can only redeem something that belongs to you. Now listen. I have called thee by thy name. Put your name there. You know, brethren, when you are reading the Bible, put yourself in the presence of God speaking to you. Not the one sitting next to you, no. That day, too, will be the same day. One will be taken, and another one will remain. The rapture, it will not be family matter, no. Because my dad has believed, because my mom has believed, uh, um, you must make sure that you met him. And if truly you met him, you can't remain the same person. No. Listen. <coughs> For I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. Amen. Oh. That's why sometimes when I'm walking, I feel so happy to see this. I belong to Jesus. I don't belong to any denomination. There was someone who was asking me, ah, but, uh, what's the name of your church? I look at him and say, I'm a Christian. I don't belong to any church. He said, no. How come? He said, yes, I belong to Christ Jesus. Now listen, let us be really fair unto ourselves. If Jesus is a Catholic, then it means that all of us in big trouble. If Jesus is a Baptist, then we are in big trouble. If he is Jehovah's Witness, then we are in big trouble. Now, all these denominations have kicked him out. When you read Revelation chapter 3 from verse 19, he's outside of churches. 
calling everyone. Come unto me. If you tell someone, say, please come to our church for you to be saved. Ah, uh, brother, you are a liar. The church doesn't save. The one who saves is Jesus Christ. So you must be sure that you have received him. You must be sure that your daily life doesn't put Jesus unto shame. Verse 2, listen. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And you know, the devil knows how to bring those waters, eh? problems. Woke up in the morning, say, no, this is the problem. What you, you are busy trying to solve this problem, another one, and then you say, but uh, what have I done? Mm -hmm. The Lord may allow it. What to say? He's standing there looking at you. He said, yeah, my son, you see the problem? You go to the waters. What is he going to do? So someone who used to tell us somewhere there is a problem. that. Say, brother, you know, since I believed your message. You know, sometimes people, they don't have any respect. Since I believe your message, my things don't work anymore. And then, you know, I say yes. That shows that truly you are a God. Listen, brothers, listen, sisters. If the devil doesn't fight against you, you are his best friends. You are walking together, going to the same direction. Can you imagine Paul, when he was still Saul, was fighting against the church of the living God? But when he received Christ, read your Bible carefully, there was a time they wanted to kill him and they had to put him in a basket for him to have his life saved. But when he was in the camp of the enemy, he was a strong man. Everyone said, hey, please don't touch that man. We will kill you. As soon as he received the Lord Jesus, all his strength, powers, you know, general of army, I don't know what he was doing, down. He became nothing. Yes, brother. Yes, sister. When you you now pass it through the waters, I will be with you, with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel. Thy Savior, I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Verse 4. Since thou was precious in my sight. Brother, sister, do you know how expensive you are? The price that was paid for you to be redeemed, you can't compare it to gold, to any precious metal that you know. 
it was far more higher than anything you can imagine. For your redemption. Have you ever considered how expensive you are? Listen, brothers, listen, sisters. You are very, very expensive. Most of us are parents. But in your house, things that you bought for one dollar, another one for ten dollars, another one for hundred dollars, eight hundred dollars. You know what is expensive in your house, and you will not dare to see anyone to come and play with that because they are just too expensive. You might have, you know, paid the banks for you to get a loan. Because it is expensive. That is exactly what each one of us we are in the sight of God. Very expensive. There are times when I'm driving from very far away, I'm coming and say yes. I'm going to see what is precious unto my God. I can't stay, I can't come here to pay bills. This is not very precious in the sight of God. You don't take it lightly. Now, because you're very precious, God Himself wants each one of us this morning to partake His divine nature. Listen, I'm about to close. Verse 5. Fear not, for I am with thee. You know, oh God. when we jump to verse 11, I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me, there is no Savior. And when Jesus Christ was born, he was called the Savior. My precious brothers and sisters, I think I must come. The Lord willing, that's why I'm asking for your prayers. Next Sunday, I will deal with uh, the other book, because uh, we have to bring in the words and then uh, let them see what they can do. They will accept. I will say, praise be to God. If they want. God Himself knows. So I will ask you to pray for me because I must be that side. May our Lord bless you richly. I always pray for my precious brothers. Yes, because I love you. Yes, uh, uh, I always thank the Lord for giving me such brothers. Then uh, I think we shall be in touch with many other brothers with the same kind of spirits because we are a team. And it's not for our kingdom, it's for the kingdom of our heavenly Father. And I know it's not the kingdom. Because one day, the Lord will say, yes, you are mine. May God be Jesus. I will ask my precious brother to come to the Lord.
itself. You know, they all itself are feeling like something. You know, that but all put the down that river too. I mean, so I don't make that up today, but we always have to be used to the age of the time. That's how we get out of it. You want to keep that. That's one of the most important things in our Christian life. To keep the life as it is important to us all. Mm-hmm. And we have Jesus. Jesus. Jesus kept the presence and the spirit and kept God in his life through what he went through. And really, he never, you know, he looked back and kept going on and kept, you know, showing people that the love of God right in his whole life. For every trial, for every thing that he went through, what the people put him through. And really, you know, he even said at the end that told the tribe, you know, get the tribe, because they not just, they not just, you know, just say, give them all their sins and they know not what they do. And, uh, I believe that's what you know people are looking more for today, not at a church, but they're looking for that same church to be dwelt within us. Amen. God. That's what, you know, we've got to show that because that word is should be established within our life because that's God. Amen. In the beginning was the word, the word was God, and the word was God. And that will keep the place to have that word within us. And that's what we have to try to put more. Generation, you know, the Bible says it's an evil generation. We live in that, right? So, um, that's what I've got to do.